Hey reefers, back with another update on the 120 gallon mixed reef tank. This uh, this episode's about a couple issues I've been having. Wow, why did that turn blue all of a sudden? Okay. Um, so, last night my pH dropped to 7.67. I got an alert on, on the phone that the Apex probe, uh, the pH probe, told me I was really low. At first, I thought, oh, it's time to give it a vinegar vinegar water soak and uh and scrub it up because obviously something's wrong but i uh i i took a look back and it had, it had been dropping um normally during the day i was seeing a peak of 8.7 and at night i was getting at the lowest 8.1 on the ph and it had been uh slowly going down over the last week and a half or so um usually when you see big spikes in ph it's because your magnesium's off. Uh, the magnesium is a, a buffer that uh, kind of. Anyway, uh, I don't know all the science. I'm I'm, I'm just kind of regurgitating what I've what I've experienced, what I what I've heard. I don't know all the technical talk, but when you when your magnesium is right, you don't see wild fluctuations. What was really off? The magnesium I did put a little bit in, but not much. Um, the alkalinity and calcium were very low. Not very low, but lower than I'd like. I normally keep the alkalinity between 8.3 and 8.5, and it was down to 7.3, uh, very low for me. I, especially since I used to keep it around 10. Uh, the calcium wasn't quite as bad. I normally keep it at 420 to 450, and it was at uh, 370 to 380. The Salifert test is a little bit more difficult to, to tell the actual number on versus the HANA that gives you a digital readout. But uh, since, sw since switching over to the dose, I've kind of gone on several different uh, dosing setups, trying to figure out how to use it the way that I like best since swapping over from the Bulk Reef Supply 1.1 milliliter doser. I transferred my uh, my dosing times over from the uh, from the bulk reef supply 1.1 milliliter doser over to the apex. I, I figured I was getting about 60 milliliters of alkalinity and 40 milliliters of calcium during the day. I think that the BRS doser was actually dosing more than 1.1 milliliter, and that's why I'm seeing less uh, less uh, less alkalinity and calcium now because when I did calibrate the, uh, the doser, uh, it, I mean, I, it, it basically came spot on. I, I think I got 39.6 uh, during the initial setup when it's supposed to dose 40 milliliters on, uh, on both sides. They were just a hair low for both of them. Um, so I, I have bumped those up. It was 60 milliliters of alkalinity, 40 of calcium, and now, now I have it at 75 on alkalinity and 50 on calcium. Um, reason is, in the next three days, I'll test again and uh, and see how much I need to jump it up or or back it off within the next uh, within the next couple weeks. I figure I'll do that every every two three days until I have it right kind of in the sweet spot where I want it and then go back to testing alkalinity every three days and everything else on the weekend. Um, so that's a little stupidity uh, hiccup that I had. Uh, the other thing is the lighting on this. Um, I was running the T5s for far too long. The Atlantics are on from 8.30 in the morning until 8.30 at night with a, uh, a one hour ramp up on the blue and UV and a one hour ramp down on the blue and UV and the white and the reddish channel on for uh, on, on a good amount for around eight hours a day. Um, so let me just show you here when we can also see there's the uh, pH drop off and there's uh, I just changed the program last night um, so that's why it's not showing 75 and 50 over here yet. It's getting there. Um, that was from my water changed water change. It was at 78.2. I then put another, uh, another heater in there, but that was mainly, um, the sump reading. Um, once it, once it all mixed with the tank water, it was back up to fine. But, uh, so my back T5, 
Oop, I gotta look. There we go. My back T5, which is a Coral Plus and a Blue Plus. It's on for six hours now a day, 11.30 to 5.30. And let's see, the front T5, which is a Blue Plus and a Actinic is on from noon to 6.30. I did have this going off at 7.30 and I had the back T5 coming on at 10.30. So photo period is cut down quite a bit and I'm anticipating that helping with the green hair algae quite a bit. Um, I'm dosing five milli, uh, I'm dosing Nopox for five minutes on the bulk resupply doser and uh, I'm using Vibrant uh, 12 milliliters of Vibrant every Friday night. And then um, I'm hoping that, uh, that through those two methods, that one, the green hair algae will go away and that two, the red slime will go away. I know that some of that is still because there is new rock in the tank. Uh, with these two newer pieces, that always seems to come up when uh, when you add new rock to the tank. Um, but I'm just hoping that that will help. Everything in the tank is doing extremely well. I'm seeing a lot of coral growth. I'm seeing a lot of uh, just great coloration throughout the tank. Uh, I was really worried about this. I believe I can't remember what what this pink one's called right now, but. Uh, it was very odd seeing the outer edges not a bright green or a typical normal color. It's very white. And then, and then I started seeing the pink coming out from the base, so I'm glad that that's doing well. Uh, so my, ooh, my little buddy down here. I've had this Duncan coral down here for quite a while, and it hasn't done anything. And then just within the last week or so, started seeing a mouth popping out over here. Now we could see those tentacles, polyps, whatever you call them over there, finally really poking out. And then just the other day, saw this one, got another new mouth. So I'm sure that means I'm gonna have issues with this coral because it's gonna start growing too fast. Always a, a problem that I enjoy, but uh, uh, yeah, just very happy that that one's finally growing. The red brick cyphaster is still doing really well. This chalice coral down here, uh, chalice corals aren't exactly fast growers, but I can't wait until that thing takes off. This red planet growing like a monster, just doing great. I love the colors, uh, just love the growth on that, doing very well. Um, I could go over every single coral, I'm just loving them, uh, like McDonald's, but up, 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 up. Okay, except. It seems like the easiest corals, your fastest growers, the best coral in your tank, the purple style of the, the giant colony, the 10 by eight colony up there. Uh, these Monty caps that I have to keep cutting back. Those are the ones you wanna get rid of. The the high performers, the, the ones that do the best in your tank. They're the ones that you kinda of wanna shove off to the side for all the new stuff, all the, all the little sticks that take forever to grow, like this Optimus Prime. It just spreads out little by little. Just grow already. The Sin City, at least at least they're both colored up very well. I'm gonna have to do another night shoot here soon uh, because especially with a orange filter on, those things are just monsters. Um, I just can't wait until they tank, take off. Unfortunately, they are a little further back in the tank so they're not getting the flow like everybody up front is. Um, and I'm not saying that these guys are exactly uh, growing with a with a vengeance, but uh, but they are doing they are doing better than uh, than the back of the tank. Um, I do want to point out I have uh, I forget the name of the polyp lab um, liquid whatever you use before you feed, but I did switch to Brightwell Aquatics Coral Amino. They had a sale on bulk reef supply during their 12 days of giveaway that Alex will never win, but still keeps supporting, of course, because they do a great job. Um, I live in Iowa, so even the free shipping, I get it basically, it, it, it's almost like Amazon to me. It's that quick. Um, but these, uh, so I got that, uh, that Brightwell Aquatics Coral Amino, 
and a they sent along with that a free package of some uh, something Blizzard, and I ended up putting in my Refroids uh, package. I don't like the plastic container or the plastic bag it came in. I like scooping it or kind of you know tapping it into containers like that so it can loosen it up as it go. Um, but this is the this is the smallest particle. It's a little bit smaller than the uh, Reef Chili. As you can see, there's some tiny particles in that, but there's also some kind of chunky stuff in there. And that's what gets caught up in, in the syringes. So that's why I don't like the Reef Chili as much. Also, the coral don't, uh, don't seem to take it in as much. Um, I don't know if it's a flavor thing. I don't know if they just got spoiled by maybe a better flavored Reefroids. I don't know. I don't know uh, why they prefer Reefroids more, but they are they have adjusted to this. They do seem to enjoy this quite a bit. And then this LPS growing color, uh, as you can see, the, the sizes of this is perfect for LPS, for the mouths on LPS. Uh, this Lobo back here, the Lobo up there that has just, I mean, that thing's probably doubled in size since I got it. They absolutely love it. The Acans love it. Uh, the Pagoda Cup, I try and get it into them. Um, it's a little bit more difficult because that's usually when Chunky is uh, done feeding on his food and he starts trying to eat them, eat the LPS food. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to have enough bittering agent in it, so he, uh, he gets another little snack. Uh, normally what I try and do is I'll feed the fish on this side as I'm feeding the coral over over here, over here, right here. And then by that point they're done, they're done eating over here as I'm trying to feed here. So then I have to dump more food in now on this side and then I quickly try and get some more over here. And then I feed this coral, which really seems to accept it pretty easily. Uh, the Duncan that just gobbles it up super quick. Hey, Mandy. All right, time for a beauty shot of uh, the prettiest fish in the tank. I would sing a song, but I know this is going on YouTube, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put you guys through that. All right, so Duncan, Duncan loves it. Eight cans over here love it. I know I've seen some of the LPS food in Agani's mouth. I don't know if they took it in. I believe that they did. It's kind of hard to feed them uh, stuff that big, especially since they're, at that point, they're a little bit smaller um, because the lighting has gone down quite a bit. So they kind of retract in a little bit. So they're, they seem to enjoy more of the reef roids, reef chili, that kind of thing at that time. But I always try and give them some of the LPS food. And this Lobo uh, loves the new food. So uh, so those are some new additions, new uh, issues I've been having. Uh, but everything in here is doing well. Uh, I think I have everything figured out. It's just going to be a next uh, next week or two that I get, um, get all the parameters back in line, basically. The uh, nitrates and phosphates have been doing really well. Uh, nitrates are extremely low phosphates are still a little bit up but not uh not to any worrisome point so i think that's all i have to say for now oh i i did sell a few coral this uh purple stylo just got made uh as it broke off when when that colony fell but uh sold a few things and uh i know i'm going to be getting another coral here soon from uh from a local reefer and this purple one will be going um, and that, and that one right there, um, which I have another piece of back there that seems to be still just growing like crazy. So, all right, reefers, that's it for this time. I'll catch you on the next update. Peace.